I'm fairly confident with ITT, but as it's always changing and there's new products that come out all the time, which are great, um, it's always helpful to be on top of everything. Yeah. Dil Dias is a Year 5 teacher at Edenbridge Primary School in Kent. He's been teaching for six years. Dill has never used voting technology in his classroom, but would like to find out more. So we've challenged him to discover as much as he can about using this technology and to transfer the skills he picks up into his own classroom. I'm excited about the visit today. Um, I'm eager to learn whether uh, the voting system can be used um, to uh, enhance learning for a whole unit rather than just a lesson because I'm aware they can do that. Following his progress through the challenge, you'll find out, among other things, how to create interactive presentations, how voting technology can help monitor progress, and how to create self-paced activities. If you want to give it a go yourself, there's a range of useful videos and support materials on the page for this programme on the Teachers TV website. So Dills travelled to Seaford to meet Kevin Morton, a PE teacher and AST at Seaford Head Community College. So how long have you had the voting system for and how easy was it to set up initially? Um, well we've had Quizdom for just, uh, just about three years actually. It's incredibly easy to set up, there's not a great deal that you need to do for it. It's a matter of uh, PowerPoint with an additional toolbar and that's it. So once you've got the slides in place, you just add the directions to the slides. I think the, the biggest problem is the imagination, so you've got to have the imagination to, uh, to come up with the idea. Kevin starts by taking Dill to see his colleague Mark Hatton in the maths department, who is using Quizdom voting technology, also known as classroom response systems, with his year eight pupils. There's numbers, there's true and false, yes and no, and this button here is the important one. This is the send button. Okay, so when you type an answer, you need to press that one to send it to me. Okay? So, here's a question for you. In maths, we consider something to be certain if we've proved it beyond reasonable doubt. Okay? That's true or false, so you've got a T and an F. Okay, so the answer is false. Let's have a quick look at the results, see how you did. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite so well on that one. OK, let's up the pace a bit. How many prime numbers are there? You've got 20 seconds to give me an answer. OK, so the answer is an infinite number. Again, another very simple statement, but it's not that easy to prove that it's true. OK, good, we're getting better as we go on. OK, let's have a look who is fastest there. Where's the view? Number 16. Who's number 16? Emily, very good. After the lesson, Mark gives Dill some extra information. You build your PowerPoint, so yeah. it is if, like you might do in a classroom anyway with a, a multiple choice quiz or whatever questions you want to ask. Uh, and then there's just an extra toolbar that slots into PowerPoint at the top, and in there you just tell it that it's this sort of question. Right. Um, multiple choice or typed response, word answer or something like that. And then you type in what the correct answer is, and, and that's it. Oh, that seems so that's straightforward, easy. Yeah, yeah. Very easy to use. And uh, I saw that you had different ways of displaying the data when the children answer the questions. Yeah. Um, are there any particular favourites that you have? The graphs uh, are useful to direct feedback for the children. Uh, you can also set it up so that it gives them feedback on their handset as okay. well as to whether they've got it right or wrong. So they could have away. a tally Yeah, so they could keep the track, lesson. Yeah, track themselves. Mark also works with Kevin, developing cross-curricular ideas to combine maths and PE. Today they are using the voting technology in a lesson based on an orienteering activity. The questions are all going to be numeracy based, so we're going to get some maths ideas coming in. Okay? The question will come up in the top left corner. To move along the question, or back, whichever way you need to go, just use the arrows, okay? and then you can enter the detail. Kevin has devised a variety of questions. Some require the actual answer to be entered in number or text, and others need the pupils to pick the correct answer from a multiple choice question. Once you've entered your information, the send button is this top left one here. Okay? So you're going to be working in pairs. It is a bit of a challenge, so obviously the speedier, the quicker you are to answer these questions and get the answers in, the quicker it will come out on my screen and I can track how fast your progress is happening. OK, let's go. We've started. 25 minutes. Students work in pairs, orienteering to different locations around the school. 
there's a maths question in each location and the answer has to be typed into the voting pad. So I mean the way it's set up we, we have this which is a, a hub so this yeah. item here plugs into USB and this will pick up all the information from the handsets. Yeah. Technically the signal is supposed to go 300 metres but they do need to be within kind of line of sight. On here obviously we can measure when the students start answering the, the questions, you see the crosses will dictate that they've got the question wrong, the ticks obviously that they've got it right. And from this I can tell not only the speed and progression that the students are making, but I can also work out in my future planning what questions were they found hard. So this is one group over here, take yeah, it. Yeah. And these are the questions at the top. That's it. So we can see here that this group have got 30% of the questions right so yeah, far. So far, yeah. I can save this information if I wanted to do the same course, same questions at yeah. the start of the year, start of the term, then do it again later at the end of the term, I could then show them the difference between their, you know, the progress they've made. Oh, brilliant. So that's, that's quite, quite handy. Many of the activities Kevin's created are self-paced. This means all the questions are set beforehand and students answer them in any order they choose and in their own time. Make sure Sir can keep up with you guys, yeah, because these two are pretty pace. fast. So. Pace. <laughs> pace. <laughs> Have a weedy good time finding this one. What's the clue in that question? Weedy. weedy. Uh, the weedy bin's in the car park. We're not allowed to go in the car park, so it must be the bike show. Right. The centre circle on the football pitch has a radius of nine metres. What is the area of the centre circle? Use pi equals three to make the calculation easier. What the most? Where we score three, high score seven. High score was wow. by hand, handset number two, whoever that was. We got four right. Not many people got number Most one. Most people got number six. Kevin uses the voting technology in a variety of PE activities. I'm impressed with how the units can display the data in different ways, how you can also keep referring back to it. But I didn't think that it would be possible to have such an open session with it where the children can dictate the pace. I thought it had to be teacher-led the whole way through. The voting pads are a great bolt-on for the lesson. I think that especially with children that aren't as confident, they will have that ability to communicate their answers in a more comfortable environment. Later in the day, Kevin uses the voting technology with his BTEC PE group in a more conventional classroom setting. Students are watching videos of fellow pupils playing tennis and are analysing their technique. When the ball comes in, as soon as it bounces up, he's hitting it up. Yeah. I've just said that his footwork's good. If you look at his feet... Yeah, every time the students have a number of questions to answer in detail on their sheets. When a question has been completed, they enter yes on their voting pad so Kevin can monitor their progress. This time, rather than having one computer recording all the pupils' results, Kevin has set up three separate computers, each recording the results from a different ability group. These guys look to be working quite well. Yeah. Uh, and then these guys have only pretty much just started, so I will try and work out ways to work with those guys right. next. Yeah. So I'm allowing the students to be able to track, monitor the loan progression and hopefully uh, go through the process of learning as well at the same time. That's, that's a great setup because uh, you can usually be fooled by what looks like yeah. getting all your work and yeah, working hard. You can actually see the progress. Yeah. There. How much uh, are the voting systems for a class for the average class? Roughly for a class size, you're looking at about it's 33 or so in there. We had two of the hub devices, so we could split the class in half effectively. You could use it for two groups, and for that, it was about 1,700 pounds. So it's quite quite a, a substantial cost initially, but um, the benefits are, are quite big. Dill's now got two weeks to devise a lesson plan for his own year five pupils, incorporating voting technology. It's all gone really well. I can't wait to take it back to Edenbridge. Hopefully I'll have some pads waiting for me there. The technology seems relatively simple. Uh, I think the main thing that you'd need to have under your belt is um, a, the ability to build some presentations. Um, if you can do that, it seems that everything's straightforward, really. Two weeks later, we're back at Edenbridge Primary School. How has Dill got on? I've been practicing with the Quizdoms. I had a go myself as soon as I got them. We did have a few problems with the voting pads to start with, uh, where some of them were connecting, some of them weren't. But really, it was just a case of switching them off, switching them on again, to make sure they're all registered at one time. And that seems to have worked. We haven't had any issues since. 
Today, Dill is using the voting technology with his Year 5 pupils in two lessons, numeracy and literacy. He displays questions in a presentation he's created, which the pupils answer together. Dill is able to see how many of them have responded and use this information to decide when to move on to the results or tackle the next question. Right, we're thinking about getting to the next 10, so you might have to think about what is the next 10. 35, add something, gets me to the next 10. OK, I've got 11 people have chosen 5. Two people have told me what the next number is. OK, the next uh, multiple of 10 will be 40, you're right, but I'll ask you to add something to 35 to take me to 40. Dill now sets the pupils off to do some self-paced questions, where they work independently from a worksheet he's created. They enter the correct numerical answer to the questions and Dill can monitor their progress. Where they're using addition solely, they're doing quite well. They're answering most of them. But as you move into subtraction, division, multiplication, there's fewer and fewer answers. But I've got one pupil here who's attempting them, so that is number seven and I believe she is sitting over on the far table. So I'll go back to her now and we'll have a look at that question and see what we can do. So what's the first thing you're going to attempt? So 21 multiplied by eight, you should be able to see that in your head. Is 160? Yeah. After a few days you start to get used to um, doing all the different buttons and things and you know what to do in a situation. I think they're easy to use now, so I'm quite confident with them. It saves time for us writing it into our books. If you don't have voting pads in your classroom, but would like to try a voting activity with your pupils, look below for a short how-to video detailing how to create a web-based vote. During a literacy lesson in the afternoon, Dill asks his pupils to use the voting pads to evaluate their progress against the success criteria, which he has on display in his classroom. With the voting pads, I was able to save a previous lesson's data in a spreadsheet put that into a presentation software and show the children where they met the previous lesson success criteria and where there was a great big hole in their learning. What is the area that's missing from the majority of our writing? What things did we miss out from our success criteria? Riley? Um, the persuasive phrases. Yeah, I'd say that's a big gap there. Six, seven and eight, all there. The pupils return to their books to find examples of where they've already used persuasive phrases or to create new ones. And they enter yes on their keypads to show Dill what they've completed. In literacy, when we're doing our success criteria, we don't usually like to check if we're doing it. And that helps us to check if we're getting our literacy right. I can target those people that haven't made much progress and I can see it quite quickly. I can stay with the group, I don't need to walk around the room as much. Um, I can look up at the board just like the rest of the children and I can see if there's any glaring hole straight away. And I can stop the class and I can focus on that and then hopefully they can make more progress because of it. To finish the day, Dill takes his pupils to the ICT suite, where some of them use the voting software to make their own interactive presentation. Right, Emily and Courtney have created this presentation, but their presentation, unlike yours, is interactive. And hopefully, over the next week or two, you'll all be making your presentations interactive. Uh, do you want to start us off, girls? Get ready for the first question. What was the cataway named after? A. Mayor. B. Head teacher. C. Prime Minister. Place your answers now. The children were all engaged. Every pupil was motivated to take part in every part of the lesson. Uh, hopefully next year we'll be introducing the voting pads at Edenbridge. We've definitely been persuaded by its uses and the fact that it's so easy to incorporate into our lessons straight away and the benefits that the children can experience by taking ownership of their learning and also seeing where there may be gaps in their learning and how they can uh, fill those gaps. If you're watching this on the Teachers TV website and are interested to see how teachers of different subjects and key stages use voting technology, then have a look at the Better Learning with ICT case studies below.